The big peacocks are just beautiful fish. We try to price them at a very fair price. Actually, we should probably just go ahead and feed him right now. Plants are a fairly new thing we got into. Doesn't need light, doesn't need heat, doesn't have to eat live insects. Boy, cool. Let's feed them. Yeah, so your sil silver hue jet gars okay. are a smaller type of gar, primarily a predatory fish, something that's going to want to eat other small fish, feeder fish, guppies, stuff okay. like that. Uh, this is a smaller type of gar, it only gets about a foot or so. Okay. Uh, freshwater gar. Um, so yeah, over here you'll find like a more community fish, gotcha. more peaceful stuff for the most part, or smaller fish that go in the, sem the semi-aggressive area that are just too small to go there right now. So like the baby gars you'll notice over here. Then once they grow a little bigger, they graduate over to this area yeah, over okay. here. Um, same with the angels, you know, they're over here with the community stuff, but as they get bigger, we move them down into more of a semi-aggressive zone. Gotcha. Um, Most of the stuff in the community I recognize. But talk about, I think it's really cool. I noticed when the first time I came to your store is you have these plastic tubs in some of these tanks. Yeah. Talk to me about that because I think it's really cool. Okay, so yeah, here's the deal with that is uh, there's a couple things going on here. So first of all, coolie loaches, which we've sold forever, um, are almost impossible for us to catch. So And most stores won't carry them because they're hard for them to catch them. Um, so my manager actually had a, a brilliant idea, which was to put it in the plastic tub in the aquarium. That way it's already captured. When we need to catch it for somebody, we just pull the tub out and they're right there for us. That's awesome. So that's why we do that. Um, and then these little shrimps in the buckets, this is kind of our foray into the freshwater shrimp deal, which is, you know, a new up and coming kind of nano aquarium, very popular thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to carry, you know, whatever it is people are looking for, what they're interested in. You know, we constantly have to change, you know, our business model here to uh, accommodate what it is people are looking for. So you're right, the little nano aquariums are super popular now with the shrimps and the plants and all that stuff. So we started carrying a lot more live plants. You'll see those over there. And we only carry a few types of shrimps right now. We usually get like one color a week and then we always keep the little algae eating amano shrimps in. Um, we keep some whisker shrimps and some different stuff. Um, but yeah, that's what that's all about. That's awesome. Is there, is there any fish that you particularly keep? Are you a reptile guy? Are you a fish guy? Uh, well, okay, yeah. So I started off definitely as a reptile guy. Snakes are my thing. Uh, I've had lots of fish, every kind of reptile imaginable. And of course, I love cats and dogs and every kind of animal. Uh, right now, I have koi. I'm into okay. the koi right now. Awesome. I built a big koi pond in my backyard, transformed my yard into a beautiful thing uh, completely. I love my koi pond. My manager has a koi pond. I got a little jealous. I did some research online because so we started carrying them here and I wanted to kind of know what I was talking about a little bit. So I did some research. I bought a pond kit, dug a hole, built a pond. It's been beautiful since then. I've had it for like four or five years now. And I, I just keep adding koi to it. My only regret with the koi pond is I wish I would have made it way bigger because um, all I want is more of that water action in my yard. We try to keep a lot of unusual stuff in. It's one of the things we're known for. Um, is getting more of the unusual stuff that not everybody has. So you'll notice we have the little gars. You'll notice we have the, the black ghost knives. You'll notice we have the little dwarf frogs in here. Um, and just some of the more unusual stuff that uh, you don't always see in, in regular pet yeah. shops. Um, well, I got the lo This big guy has a fire, a fire eel. Fire eel, yeah, awesome right animal. I love that guy. Right oh yeah, he's great. <laughs> Yeah, actually, we should probably just go ahead and feed him right now. That's actually what I was going to do right now. Okay. So every week when I get my uh, stuff in, the first thing I do is I feed it all. And so you just saw me throwing some food in. The next thing I do is I like to put a lot of live food in for my predatory stuff. Um, it's really important to get a meal in their belly right away. Um, so yeah, I'm going to grab some shrimps and some fish. And I'm just going to kind of go through and uh, any... Buffet. Any of my little predatory guys, I want to get them off to the right start, make sure they got a nice meal in their belly, especially since I'm uh, off for the next three days. And uh, I can't do it if I'm not here. So I'll get those guys some little ones. Um, these guys, some little guys here. There we go. All right. Make sure to put some in for this guy. Yeah, buddy. We'll have to give him a hiding area too. Otherwise, he'll just dig down under the gravel. I think he's the biggest one I've seen um, Oh, I got these moray eels over here. Now, these are definitely more of a brackish water thing. So okay. we're constantly talking people out of buying those for their freshwater aquariums. <laughs> Even though they can be in freshwater, they're in freshwater now. But if you want them to do well long term, really brackish is the way to go. It's really what's recommended on those. That's my understanding anyway, is that uh, they'll just live a longer, more full life. They'll give each more of their appropriate size. Same with these little puffers here. Same exact deal. 
kind of a brackish recommendation on those. Yeah, we try to keep a lot of the weird stuff. Um, also, another thing we do here, you know, we're, um, you know, we're primarily a reptile store, and what we're kind of known for is having all the feeders on hand at all times. I was so. going to say, for a reptile store, having live brine trip, I think you're the only place in Central Florida that I know of at least that usually carries live brine trip, and the selection of live stuff yeah. you guys have is, is crazy. And that gets delivered tomorrow. That's why it's empty right now. So everything comes on Thursday except for that. That comes on Friday. Um, but yeah, we've kind of transferred that. You know, we're kind of known for carrying all the feeder insects, rodents, all that stuff for the reptiles. And then on the fish side, that's kind of our, our same deal. We try to have all the feeders. We sell a really good price on them. Uh, we give a really, really good count on them. So a lot of people make the trip out here because they know they're gonna get basically something for free when they come in here. Generally, every variety of aquarium driftwood you're looking for, I have. I have the Malaysian wood, I have the Mopani wood, I have the Congo wood, I have the spider wood, I have the Manzanita wood, I have Choya branches, I have grapevines, I have every type of wood you're looking for. And as far as keeping the prices down, we're not just a fish store, so we're not like completely dependent upon this for our survival. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really the reptiles that pull us through. That's our main money maker. That's really where our business comes from. The fish is just kind of extra. You know, that's like a icing on the cake for us. Um, so yeah, we stock them, we carry a lot of stuff. We try to price them at a very fair price so people can come in here and buy them really cheap and I can order more the next week, basically. Basically. Some aggressive stuff over here, certainly. Um, so yeah, African cichlid's very popular. I mean, about as colorful as you can get for freshwater fish. Um, and you know, we sell ours really cheap. We have this six for 25 deal. That's been our price literally for the past 20 years on those. Um, so yeah, this is our little assortment of Imbuna types, very aggressive fish. Uh, we got the peacocks, uh, the, the haplochromis, uh, some frontosas, some, some a little bit more, um, even even prettier type of Africans, maybe not quite as aggressive as these, but these get really pretty. If you look over here, you'll see the adult ones, how awesome they get. Um, the big peacocks are just beautiful fish, oh, yeah. very nice fish. Um, so and you, you can see the price on them too. You know, we sell these nice big ones for 25 bucks. You know, if somebody needs to find a place for a fish, I'm happy to take it. Otherwise it's gonna end up in a lake or something. And that's terrible for our business, you know. The more stuff that gets led in the wild, starts breeding out there, uh, the more they start like restricting what we're allowed to have. Next thing you know, you're not allowed to have this, you're not allowed to have that, because people are irresponsible with it. So, um, you know, it's good business for me to take back the big fish, because then I can turn around to sell them to somebody who has a bigger tank, you know. Somebody that doesn't want that fish anymore, somebody else is gonna love to have that fish. Um, so yeah, we try whenever they're healthy, when we can, we take back the fish. Cause honestly, you know, a lot of the stuff we sell is gonna grow quite large. There's a perfect example. That's a Paku, that thing gets huge. So most people who buy that fish are not gonna have a tank big enough to raise it in. Um, but trust me, there are people around that do have tanks big enough to raise those in. Um, so yeah, you know, they trade them in here. We sell them to somebody who has a bigger tank. Plants are a fairly new thing we got into. Um, um, I had a guy working here a couple years back who was like someone that I consider to be a fish expert. Um, and he was the one that told me, he's like, hey, listen, you really got to carry the live plants. And he kind of gave me the uh, basics to set them up. And so, yeah, I started one little plant tank. And as my business built up, um, I had to put in a second plant tank. Um, um, so yeah, now I order like about this many plants every week and we basically sell them all every week. So every Thursday we get a fresh batch in. And again, I sell them really cheap. Um, you know, my, my, I'm not trying to make them live in here forever. I'm, I'm trying to get people to buy them, you know? And so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting rich off of it. We're just working hard and selling stuff and trying to make people happy, basically. Keep a, quite the cleaner crew in there to help me out. So yeah, yeah, I'm big on uh, keeping all the stuff to keep the, the tank clean. So you'll notice there's assassin snails in there, got the Siamese algae eaters, bushy nose plecos, there's otosynclius cats in there, uh, some whisker shrimps in there. Um, gosh, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, we try to keep a nice assortment of betas and I'm pretty fond of, uh, where is she? Oh, I had one the other day here. It was a little female. We sold her, didn't we? It was a female crown tail. It was so cute. Um, and somebody already snatched her up for sure. But yeah, I try to carry a nice selection. So I have, I don't know, five or six different varieties now. I keep the little chart here. I think betas are kind of like the koi. I think people like to collect the different colors and the different fin styles. Personally, my interest, besides just loving animals, but you know, I've been doing this now for, how old am I? 44, we've had this store since I was 14. So I've been doing this for 30 years now, okay? Very long time. 
several times now in my life, I've made my house into a breeding facility where there was animals in every room. And basically I had to work all the time. Um, so I made a deal with, with my latest wife uh, that um, we've been married for 10 years now, <laughs> um, that I wasn't gonna do that anymore. I was gonna leave my work at work for the most part and home was gonna be for home time. Um, so um, what my wife and I really enjoy is working in the yard. Okay. Um, and so, like I said, that koi pond just set it off for us because it's just a whole nother level. I mean, planting plants is one thing, um, but having a water feature in your yard with living, growing fish uh, is just the coolest thing ever. Um, and it was easy, man. I mean, it was hard work, or as I like to call it, free exercise. Um, but, um, you know, dig a big hole, lay the liner in there, run your piping. I mean, use your imagination, make it cool. And uh, you have a favorite style of koi or color? I'm a yeah, so, color. okay. Know, yeah, so my, my deal is, so you'll see their charts right there next to you. It shows you basically all the types, colors, varieties. So my goal is basically, I like to have like one of each type. Okay. Um, so when I'm looking in there, I'm looking for things I don't already have in my pond, something different, uh, or potentially to upgrade something that I just see a nicer version of that. Um, but yeah, my styles change, you know. When I first started getting koi, I loved like the metallic white ones, like the platinums and stuff. I thought it was so cool. Um, and then over time, I started liking the kohakus, you know, like the red and white ones. Then I got into the long fin ones. Um, then I started getting into, and this happens with a lot of people who are into animals, you know, your, your tastes change over time. You start looking for these small little differences in the fish or animals that like, keep you interested in it. So now I'm really into the different types of scales on the kois, uh, the shinrin scales, the scaleless fish. Um, there's several varieties and when you really get to looking at them, you can really start to see there are certain colors and then there's certain scale types and then there's combinations of those and certain fin types. Um, so there's literally hundreds of different types you can get. And that's my problem. That's why I need more pond in my yard because I, I have like 30 or 40 koi out there now and uh, I really need a lot more space if I'm gonna put any more in there. So next yard, way bigger. Next pond, I'm talking, I'm gonna dig it out with an excavator, it's gonna be huge. <laughs> so we used to be full line. So when we first got this place 30 years ago, we had a groomer in the back room. Uh, we had puppies over there. They were like puppy mill puppies, generally something we recommend against. But you know, we had just bought the store at that time and we were huge into birds. It's primarily a bird, fish, and puppy store at that point. Um, then we got uh, really heavily into uh, like designer dog foods and stuff. Um, and then like all the pet smarts and pet co's and pet supermarkets started opening and they of course sell all that stuff uh, cheaper th than we could. Um, so it was at that point that we really started realizing the interest in reptiles, how it was growing and how there was kind of um, a void there for us that we could fill. Um, and that's kind of how we found our niche. You know, we started carrying a lot of reptiles. Um, main things we do with our reptiles that generally set us apart is first of all, we try to make sure we always have all the proper feeds in stock. So live, frozen, pre-killed, every size, every type, every type of insect. So we just try to have everything you need for those particular everything. animals. And then the other thing we do, um, and you wouldn't believe it looking at all our signs that say don't open these cages, um, but basically what happens is people are allowed to come in here and look at and handle these animals all day long. Um, so that's a big draw for us people. People love to be able to come in and hold our animals. They keep them friendly for us. They keep them socialized. Um, they get to see lots of cool stuff for free. They don't have to pay to do it. Doesn't need light, doesn't need heat, doesn't have to eat live insects. This is just a very simple kind of reptile to keep here. The easiest lizard to care for right here, crested gecko. Very popular. Huge personality on these guys. Um, interesting thing about this particular lizard is they thought that these were extinct until the mid 90s. Wow. Yeah. Um, and they rediscovered them in the wild. And, where are they from? and now they're one of the most popular pets you can find. New Caledonia. Nobody knows where it I was is. Say. <laughs> Australia. Okay. It's off the coast of Australia. That's, That's exactly cool right. That's like, yeah. I love fun facts. So, yeah, they come from an island where it's basically pretty much always like room temperature ish, like okay. 75, 80. Yeah. Um, so, they require them and they're nocturnal. So, they don't need the sunlight. They don't need the, the heat source. They don't need like so many things that other reptiles need. So, um, super popular. So, we do a lot of that, just letting people hold these little animals and, um, you know, it's like, I, I, th I think that's why people like coming in here. I would. I'm not a big reptile guy, but 
I think it's a pretty cool little perk Not that yet. you don't see. Not, Not yet. yet, yeah. They're easy to care for. I don't for. have much room, man. My garage has like 50 well, fish tanks. Well, I in, believe so. it. Trust me, I've been there before. <laughs> I know, you, I, I can tell. <laughs> been there several times. Now I just keep it all at the pet store. <laughs>